Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Luigi Mondelli, and this is the Gray Matter Project, a subcategory or playlist here inside my personal vlog slash martial arts channel, and also a subcategory inside the Fight Team podcast. Today, I'll be talking about storms, boats, snitches, and tribe. And this is a very interesting, I guess, topic, at least in my opinion, and that's why I would like to share with you. Please don't forget to consider subscribing to my channel. Send me your comments and hit the notifications button. It will really help me with the algorithm here on YouTube. I was browsing the other day uh, my Facebook feed, and I saw that a friend shared one of his friend's posts. I don't remember the person, person's name. I would like to give him credit, but uh, if you are listening or he, uh, watching this, you know who you are. And thank you very much for your post. He mentioned um, this sentence we are all riding the same storm, but we are not in the same boat. Kind of something around those lines. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty awesome here. That's a really, really good topic. And he had this whole dissertation uh, based on this sentence. And it was pretty much everything that I, I'm going to repeat here. I couldn't find the feed uh, anymore because it has been a few days. But uh, so I, I'm not trying to take credit for what he said. I'm just repeating. But just to be a little bit different, we, we're going to do a quick exercise here today. We will imagine, uh, I will write a storyboard for a movie, and um, you just follow here with me and see if we can make a parallel. Imagine scenario number one is the Bering Sea. So if you don't know where and how um, stormy the Bering Sea can be, just watch Deadly Sketch on Discovery Channel, those crab fishing boats, when they are going through the storm, the boats are not so big, and these guys are very, very brave. And actually, there is, uh, has been some episodes with some girls, even a captain, uh, running that boat, those boats and just fishing throughout the storm. So that's the scenario. That's the picture that I want you guys to imagine. High swells and waves and terrible, gusty winds. And now let's talk about what type of vessels we will see in the water. Number one, huge cruise ship. So I want you guys to imagine a huge, huge, huge nice uh, cruise ship. Inside the cruise ship, we will see upper middle class people and wealthier people. They're still drinking their nice wine and scotch, having their shrimp cocktails and caviar. They can feel the, the winds and they can feel the, the ocean, but it's not, they don't feel unsafe at all due to the size of the boat and because they really could afford being a strong and techno technologically speaking, advanced vessel. Following behind those boats that I told you, those vessels, the fishing vessels that we can see at Deadly Sketch, they are big vessels, big boats with two big engines, and you have this crew of brave men and women fishing throughout the storm, throwing those huge cages, going against the waves and the swells to keep feeding their families, to keep uh, supplying food for the for for the community, for the world, for the food chain supply uh, supply chain, and uh, right behind them we're going to see a third type of fishing boats, a smaller fishing boats going through, uh, just maybe trying to fish. I don't know if a fishing boat, uh, what type of fishing boat would fish throughout that storm, but we will just try to use our imagination here. And behind this third. A row of smaller fishing boats we will see uh, drifting away some of those life-saving devices that looks like a canopy they are deployed when a vessel sinks so when a ship or a boat sinks and we see these huge things that just inflate and people the lucky people that can climb onto they uh, get inside have some food still have some, how to launch some signals and have maybe a, a little bit of potable water and those people have absolutely no control over what's happening, and they are at the mercy of the sea. So that's like take one. We saw that. Imagine this is a movie. And now, cut. We are showing this woman or this guy and from his stateroom inside the cruise ship, from his uh, balcony, calling the Coast Guard to complain, whine, and yell, and snitch on the uh, maybe even friends. They are fishing for crab or fishing for fish, 
in those smaller fishing boats. And they're calling. They make such a big deal about it. They're making the Coast Guard take those helicopters throughout the storm, putting the police, uh, not the police, that's my comparison with the police, my analogy, uh, getting the people in those helicopters risking their lives just to come here all, uh, all the way in the middle of the ocean to see what's going on. And those are the people that are still and sleeping in a warm bed. They are dry. They're still eating well and drinking well because they could afford to be in a big cruise ship. And they're still having a good time, but they are calling to bitch and snitch about those. They still have to keep working throughout the storm. And imagine like the captain of the smaller fishing boats as small business owners and the employees or the fishermen uh, on the decks, they are working there because they need to make um, money. They still need to uh, pay for the bills and they, they are fortunate to still have an employer or a captain fishing throughout the, that storm. They have no other option. They have to feed their families. Same thing with the smaller fishing boats. And those people in the cruise ships, the same ones that are snitching on the people that are trying to live their lives, they will not go back and ask the captain to turn around to, to look for the smaller uh, life-saving devices, the, those canopies that are at the mercy of the, the sea and the winds. They're not going to be asking the captain to turn around. But most likely, the smaller fishing boats will be the ones that will defy what they were supposed to be doing, like defy the storm and go around to try to save those people that are right now in the water. This is my comparison. This is my analogy. Look around yourself and see if you have weak and fearful people around you. Because I can guarantee to you that the weak and the fearful people, they are the most dangerous in moments of crisis. They will do anything that they can to survive and they will not act with compassion. They will say from the, 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 the comfort of their staterooms, from the balconies inside their cruise ships, they will say that they are trying to save everyone, but they are not. They're just thinking for themselves. They are selfish and they don't have compassion to understand what other people are going through. They don't understand what other people need to do to keep feeding their lives. And not only that, like I read in a few comments on Facebook in different groups, they would say like, that's your problem if you could not afford to be inside a cruise ship like we have. It's your problem if you couldn't save money to buy a bigger boat. It's your problem if you didn't run your fishing business in a way that you could afford to stay three or four months without fishing. And, and like I said, they're not going to be going around to pick up those people that are afloat right now. If you have any snitches in your inner circle, it's your time now to look around and just like remove them from your life. Or better off, you could do one thing. You could maybe talk to them, try to expose what you're going through and see if they would learn and exercise compassion. Maybe you can convince them to become strong, assertive and powerful people as well. But if they refuse to work in their weaknesses and their fears, if they still need this huge state to protect them, and if they still feel like they have to snitch in order to save their asses, trust me, you don't want to have those people around you. Because right now, COVID-19 was a major crisis. One of probably, I would say, I, I'm trying to think here, but I think this is the biggest crisis after the World War II. We had many different wars. We had the Vietnam War, the Korean War, the Cold War. We have all of that. But n not in recent, recent history, we had a situation like a pandemic like this that really shut down the entire world, or at least like most of the world. But something worse can happen. Trust me, there are many other things. Another pandemic, much worse can happen. Another war can happen. Um, countries can turn against each other and things can get bigger. That's the truth in humanity. That's realism. So think about those people, what they would be capable of in order to save their asses in a major crisis, in a, major, in a bigger situation than the COVID-19. My opinion is we all should wear masks. Yesterday I did a social experiment. I'll go over that in my next video. I wanted to see how aggressive people could get. So I took my 
face cover for a second and some dude yelling at us. And I just like, I didn't engage in anything. I just said, meh, you know, but uh, that's for another video. I believe that it's just, it doesn't hurt to wear your face mask. I, I feel like everybody wearing the same face mask takes away our identity. So I don't wear those type of uh, medical masks. I don't like it. I don't want to be like everybody else. So I come up with my own different uh, things, my face masks and cover, but I cover for the most part. I believe that we have to take COVID-19 seriously. Whenever I open my school, I will not going to be uh, irresponsible. I will be way more responsible than I, I guarantee that even the state will ask because I believe that as a martial arts coach, I should set some sort of example. And one of my examples that I'm trying to set now for my students is to exercise my mental flexibility, to talk more about social issues and political issues because I have different experiences than many people because I came from a different country and I, I have been part of, let's say, minority as an immigrant here, but that never affect me. I never use that uh, group identity because you guys know by now that I really hate group identity. But um, I bring a different perspective. So I would like to promote this mental flexibility. I would like to promote this type of exercise where people try to understand each other better and without being political correct because we have to name things as it is. We have to really be honest with our opinions. So this is my new episode, uh, Storms, Boats, Snitches, and Tribe. Make sure that whoever is in your tribe is in the same mission as you. Make sure that if you have any weak, per, any person that is not feeling assertive, weak, or somebody that is fearful, but wants to work on those issues, would you help them? Show them there are many different ways that they can become stronger. But never be around weak people that don't want to get stronger, but they, wanna, they want to weaken the strong to level from below. We should never level ourselves from below we have to have higher standards so that's my call that's my mission to strengthen the weak and that should be also your mission to strengthen the weak and not to let them level you from below don't be uh, don't feel guilty for feeling stronger and assertive take things seriously be responsible but honestly move away from the people that can become a liability and a danger to your life Last thing, again, if you could uh, send me your comments, hit the subscribe button. I'm not trying to be a YouTuber, but if you have been following me, you saw that I changed some things. I'm using the streaming software here to uh, record this whole thing. I'm playing with different lights and different shadows and different things. I am pretty much trying to teach myself because I want to keep learning new things throughout this uh, social distancing and this whole COVID-19 isolation. Send me what you think. If you like better, the purple light behind me. Uh, this is my basement. This is my office. I'm having a good time recording these videos. And I hope you enjoy it too. Share this with your friends if you think like I have uh, some good points. Or just send me a comment saying that I'm completely wrong and I will understand. Last thing, if you haven't uh, done yet, read the book 12 Rules for Life. An Antidote to Chaos will be very re relevant. Uh, based on what we are going through, the book is from Jordan Peterson. Description here below, on my you can get it from my links from my Amazon uh, store. Also, um, this is part of one of his chapters, where he says always assume that the other person knows something that you don't, and that's why I'm doing this here. I'm trying to show you some ideas, and maybe you can enlighten myself as well. Thank you very much, and see you soon.